internet. Yeah. What's up? We we're, made it. We're is back. That like, is that a nut or a coconut on the can? <laughs> that thing at the top. This thing? Yeah, is that a coconut? That's an orange it? peel. An yeah. orange peel? What? Oh, yeah, now it makes more sense that the can's facing towards me. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like maybe it was like two halves of a coconut cracked in half. I don't know. Actually, I think one... Yeah, like, one can's not good. bad. That's not yeah. bad. That's enough for us to try. All right. Well, this week we are taking a look at Dogfish Heads Variety Pack. I believe this is their summer variety pack. The Off-Centered Activity Box. Yeah. Only kind of activities I want. <laughs> off-centered <laughs> off ones? Off-centered ones? Yeah. So their kind of motto is Off-Centered Ales for Off-Centered People. So I think that's kind of why they went with that. Nice. Yeah. I like it. So... The first beer we're taking a look at is the Namaste White. It's a Belgian style whip beer. Nice, I like those. So uh, we'll uh, take a look at it. Very clear. It's, it's it's a tad murky. A little bit. Yeah. I mean, mine definitely is. I don't know why mine's a lot more murky than you got. I don't like, know. You probably got the yeast. Yeah, I yeah, feel like Yeah, you got I the did. bottom of the can, kind yeah. of. So, hmm, let's see what it smells like. I'm trying to think of what the word for that is. It generally just smells like a light beer to me. I don't know. It, <laughs> yeah, I mean... It doesn't have anything distinct to it. It's got kind of like that saison like... Yeah, it does. Grassy smell. Kind of like that saison that I made. Yeah, it smells, it smells just like, like that. that. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, maybe we'll try it. It's a little more bitter than I was expecting. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it mentions IBUs. I don't think it does. No. It's very like fizzy as soon as it hits your tongue. Mm-hmm. It almost feels like a pop rock when it hits your tongue. <laughs> it is, yeah. yeah, yeah. The, I get that. the carbonation is yeah. different. Yeah. Uh, it's 4.8% alcohol. That's about all I can get off of the can. Is there a description? Oh, there is a yeah. description. Our Belgian style white ale brewed with delicious dried orange flesh. And peel, fresh cut lemongrass, and a bit of coriander, peppercorns, and a generous dose of good karma. Huh. Well, that would explain the Saison kind of stuff, because Saison's usually lemongrass and pepper kind of taste. Okay. I definitely get the lemon t- lemon on the aftertaste. You mm. can definitely get the lemon It's kind of like, it makes me think of a mixture between that one that you made, the lemon mm-hmm. Saison, and like little bit of blue moon and then like a little bit of like a lighter yeah i think they definitely used wheat in the grain bill looks like there's wheat from the little picture oh there we go yeah yeah wit beer is wheat beer i'm pretty sure in german German, yeah yeah. it's like the only german i know (laughs) well yeah beer related yeah german is Mm -hmm. the only german i know (laughs) you know bad yeah i like it I wouldn't want too many of them. I'd give it a six out of ten. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't seek it out. But if it was, if it was presented to me like right now, I would drink it. Yeah. I would have yeah. no problem drinking it. I guess it's the kind of beer that if I ordered it, like, I'd be happy with it. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't regret getting it. Right. But I might try something else for my second beer. Exactly. Know? Yeah, I definitely have something else for my second beer. I would not order like five of these in a row. No, no, definitely yeah. not. But it's 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 not bad. Yeah. So. Okay, cool. Let's yeah. get number two. This is number two. Uh, number oh, two. no, let's not get number two. <laughs> I've, I've tasted this one. I, I'm a big fan of this. I am not excited. Uh, this is uh, Dogfish Head Sequential Ale. They brew it with limes, black limes, and sea salt. I like limes and sea salt. Right, it's kind of a, I'm going to give us a little bit more than Kyle. Yeah, okay. Because he doesn't like it. That's no. fair. The owner of Dogfish Head does a series on YouTube called That's Odd, Let's Drink It. And he had Burt Kreischer, the, the nice. machine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. this is what they were drinking. <laughs> it was good. So it was, yeah, lime juice, lime peel, black limes, and sea salt. Session sour. Yeah, it's a, it's a sour. All right, this is my first sour beer i'm pretty sure well this is a very tame sour beer so it's a good one for you to try first that's good (laughs) (laughs) so it's hazy yeah very hazy 
Not very much head at all. Very, very yeah, little. Very little head. I think yeah. this was like... Just a film. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think his goal with this one was to make something crushable that was pretty low calorie. No, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. You smell that sourness. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of almost standing in front of Lake Erie. Okay. I, yeah. Yeah, I got the, you. The sea salt kind of... Mm. I can see that. Even, even though there's no salt. <laughs> yeah, but it just has that like musk. <laughs> yeah, that leak like eerie the, musk. Yeah, that, I, I'm with you. Yeah. The... But this is a big body of water and <laughs> things have died in it a lot. <laughs> that's what makes it sour. <laughs> yeah, kinda, yeah I, uh, that's a really good description, yeah. honestly. Yeah. All right, let's try it. Hmm. That's weird. <laughs> the only thing that helps for me is the saltiness. It's. It kind of reminds me of like Fruit juice kind of reminds me of salt water, mm -hmm. which uh, it's not unpleasant, but I don't know if it's pleasant either. <laughs> I, I gotta try some more. I don't know. Uh, this is why I love Dogfish Head, because like you just never know with a beer that they make if it's if it's gonna be something you like or not. That's weird, man. I like it slightly better the second time I've had it. <laughs> well, that's good. It was like a zero out of ten the first time I had it. Now it's like a two. Okay. If, okay. If there were like two choices of like things to drink on planet Earth, <laughs> I might occasionally have one of these. <laughs> Fair. Do I do I taste a wheat? I don't. I don't know what's in the grain bowl for this. There's no wheat on the can. Huh. Uh, oh yeah, no no. There's wheat on the can. Look at that. Okay. Yeah, it's it's weird. It's like part, mostly like the aftertaste. I taste some wheat, and that lets me know, like, this is a beer. <laughs> but the rest of the flavor is... It's salt and lime. Very different. It's like, if a margarita was trying to be a beer, I think it'd be this. Like, but... But without a little like, bit yeah a little bit i can i don't know i can kind of see that yeah i don't know i'm i, I like it it's not one that i want a ton of it's definitely a great beer to start a conversation though <laughs> yeah that's for sure it is you will get a reaction with this thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I don't hate it i it's not my favorite but right. like it's interesting and different mm -hmm. and I like trying things that are interesting and different. I do too. If you've ever had a fish tank and you didn't clean it or have a filter in it for like two weeks, this is what the water would look like. <laughs> and it would kind of smell like it too. <laughs> yeah. Never tasted that water. <laughs> However, <laughs> I hope it wouldn't taste like this. <laughs> Imagine it tastes a lot worse. <laughs> Probably, yeah. For something so out there and like with such a strong taste, it seems really crushable. Mm -hmm. Like, could just down like if if you were the one guy in the world that absolutely loves this, <laughs> you could just like get a case of it and go through half of it. Yeah, and I I, I think I think that was kind of his goal when he was making this one. Sea quench ale. Yeah. All right. Anything else to say about this? No, I, I got my piece in. All right. Two out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> man, I'd, I'd at least give it like a four or five. Like, I don't love it, but... Have at it, man. Give it your rating. Bad. If you like sour beers, you'll really like this. It's my first sour beer, and I don't hate it. <clears throat> there you go. That's, that's yeah, it's my summary. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, move on. Oh, this one's going to be interesting. All right, beer number three... Yeah, Super 8. The the Super goes. Whoa, it's like... It looks like a wine. Red. We're going to start off with a little bit, because okay. I'm not sure you guys are going to like this. Okay. All right. Hawaiian sea salt. Not just any sea salt in that can. It says Hawaiian sea oh, there, salt. Oh, there's sea salt in this can? Yeah. I haven't read the ingredients. I just looked one. at the very bottom below your finger. Ah. So the Super 8. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Sessionable goes um, brewed with 
a bevy of heroic fruits. Oh, yeah. Quinoa. What? And a deep, vibrant red with ample addition of Hawaiian sea salt. Quinoa in a beer? What? That is quinoa, right? Yeah. All right, yeah. Quinoa. Quinoa. So it's heroic <laughs> fruit and quinoa. Mm-hmm. I've never met a fruit I would describe as heroic, but all hey. right. You just never know. It It's like quinoa. the color of, like, Juicy juice. It is. It's it's clear. Right? Uh, it's very yeah. clear. It's not quite red. It's like if you hold up the light, it's more orangish than yeah, red in my orange-ish opinion. Pink kind of. Yeah. 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 Almost rose colored. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Again, no head at all. What's uh it looks like fruit that juice. That is man. very strange smell. Yeah. I don't even know where to start on that smell. Tart. Yeah, Tart. I get a little bit of that. I get like a little bit of floral something a mm-hmm. little bit ah, yeah that's, predominantly like it's rough tart. that's rough maybe mm-hmm. a little little sour yeah i don't know of a smell i haven't tried this one yet so oh I'm wow first time for everyone yes. it's gonna, all right guys all right, well, let's give it a try yep what it's fruity mm-hmm. yeah and it's very fruity yep tart is the right it's very tart at the end. It's like a tart yeah, a little fruit bit. Juice. Mm-hmm. That's not bad. No, I, I like it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I didn't know if I was going to. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. I feel like if you just like you describe this to me, like mm-hmm. when you when we were 5. reading the can, 3%. I was like, I don't know. I don't think I'm gonna like it, but it's not bad. <laughs> I think we might have to have another one of those later. <laughs> I've got two more. Very good. Nice. Yeah, you can have the rest of that can if you want it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he why wants not? it. Yeah, <laughs> he there wants he goes. It. I'm not gonna finish the can. I'm just gonna have most of the can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's pretty good. To me, it reminds me more of a wine than a beer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I get yeah. more. It's like a wine beer. Yeah. Like I get a little bit it's of. It's like both. a Hawaiian beer. <laughs> <laughs> Hawaiian. Oh, yeah. I see what yeah. you got. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I got you. Wow. I want to know what fruit is in it. Because I don't. I already, definitely taste something like a little darker. I already like told a, you it's yeah, quinoa. Like a blackberry or something. Like yeah, dark kinda, fruit. Yeah. Um, it's, it's quinoa. From the, from the uh, logo design. Looks like kind of raspberries. Maybe a grape. Maybe. One grape. <laughs> a, a single grape? Yeah. In a whole batch. Yeah. One grape. grape. Raspberry. I don't know. <laughs> is that maybe like a kiwi? That green thing? Or is that a quinoa? I don't think. <laughs> no. That's not a quinoa. <laughs> I don't know what they look like. <laughs> I don't either. This is foreign fruit. <laughs> maybe it's a cactus. Is that a cactus? I don't know. It People does. Look, it, yeah, it does fruit. have that right pattern. That like square thing with the prickles. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst <laughs> description of a cactus I think anyone has ever given. It's definitely my <laughs> square thing with the prickles. <laughs> this is definitely my favorite can. I love the little. Uh, it's great. Uh, <laughs> looks like it like belongs in a comic book. Yeah. yeah. They're little superhero fruit. Super 8. They're super fruit. <laughs> that means this is good for you, beer, right? Yeah. yeah health food. Health it's, food. There you go. It's all good for you because alcohol kills bacteria. So it's perfect. There the you more go. you drink, the healthier you get. There's fruit in it. Fruit's good for you. <laughs> Hops are a vegetable. They're in beer. They are. I can dig it. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> Pleasantly surprised. Not yeah. Bad. The next one up, we are looking at the slightly mighty... Locale IPA. Huh. It is 95 calories and 3.6 carbs. Apparently that's the big thing with this one. Huh. This Locale IPA is brewed with mighty aromic hop varieties that deliver tropical notes with a slightly sweet balance provided by the monk fruit extract. 
<laughs> what is a monk fruit? I have no it's idea. It's a fruit Where do they grown find by monks. <laughs> oh, yeah? No, probably not. I don't know. I'm going gonna, gonna to get the wiki on that. <laughs> I'm just upset we're counting calories with beer. <laughs> it's like when someone asks if beer is vegan. <laughs> what are you going to do? Are you expecting a hamburger to fall out of it? Like, <laughs> Kyle, this looks a lot more like your color of beer i don't know i hear ipa an and IPA i get concerned i get scared by ipas well, especially with dogfish head ipas you just never know i mean i've been pleasantly surprised by the last two so i hear ipa and i get under my bed and cry <laughs> <laughs> no since we started this we've had some pretty pretty decent IPAs. yeah there are, yeah. some of them haven't been bad not bad yeah. well it's very clear yeah i like that oh that's no, I again got the yeast, that, the yeasty guys mm. at the bottom. <laughs> yeah. It has a really good smell. Oh, yeah. Like a little bit of that pine needle hoppiness, but also like the mm. citrusy, like slightly tropical yeah. hoppiness too. Oh, no, I'm not going to like that. <laughs> you don't think? Oh, no, not a chance. <laughs> I like the smell though. Like if that was in right. like... A, if that was in like a candle, right? I would burn that. Oh yeah, right. absolutely. Yeah. It's like a nice like piney outdoorsy smell. Maybe that's what we should do. Let's just get in the business of making hop candles. Dude, that would be great. That would be if great. I had a candle that smelled like this, or like an air freshener I can hang in my car. Yeah. yeah. Right? Let's make a great they, air freshener. Do they make hop candles? I guarantee they do not. <laughs> <laughs> if not, guys, we, we found a million dollar. Are business. you an alcoholic? Would you like a candle? <laughs> this one's for you. <laughs> <laughs> Can have a line of beer scented candles, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Great. I think I think we're on to something. Oh yeah, we're getting there. <laughs> oh, all right. Well let's give it a try. Hmm. Oh no. <laughs> that's way like that's way too much hops for me. It's not bitter though. It's just that tinny like hop taste. I don't, like I, on the back of your tongue. Yeah, taste, I, yeah. My body's just like you shouldn't be ingesting this. That's not natural. <laughs> I don't know. I I feel like this is probably the most pleasant amount of hops I've had in an IPA. I, I have to admit, for, for not being a hazy IPA, I, I really like it. Like, a lot of times the reason I really don't like IPAs is that aftertaste. Yes. And I feel like I get more of the taste of the hops without that aftertaste. Right. Like, that's, I don't know, almost non-existent aftertaste, which I really like. No, it's very good. I do like the very like beginning notes of the flavor, mm -hmm. like that. Like you get that like pine needle-y taste, mm -hmm. like that how exactly how it smells. Right. You get that mm -hmm. taste, but that yeah, that taste on the back of my tongue, the hops hitting, not a fan. This is probably the first IPA I've liked enough that like, if I had one, I would order a second one at a okay. bar. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. Yeah, not bad. All right. Four out of ten. Yeah. Four out of ten, yeah. I'd go like a six and a half. Yeah, I, I think that's kind of where I'd be at. Well, Dogfish Head's variety pack was definitely off-centered. That was real interesting. Got yeah. to try two sour beers, which was new for me. Yeah, it's... it's A lot of them were good. I can't say they're like my go-tos. Yeah. I didn't hate all of them. <laughs> I semi like I I liked one of them. Which one? The Super Eight. That's like that okay. was like a seven and seven seven and a half out of ten. Okay. Strong seven out of ten. And then uh, that white one. I can't read what's on the top because my eyes. Say white. Yeah, it's probably like a. I don't remember. I probably gave that a rating already. <laughs> I probably gave that like a three or a four. Huh. This is, yeah, I would say the Sea Quench Ale is definitely my least favorite. Yeah. I would agree. Of the four. Then probably, I would say the Namaste White, just because mm -hmm. I liked it, but it was, I don't know, kind of average to, for me. Yeah, it didn't feel like a dogfish head beer. It didn't feel different. Yeah. And surprisingly, I don't, the, the Super 8 was really good. But I think actually my favorite was the Slightly Mighty IPA, which is weird. Not usually an IPA guy, but... Right. No, it is very good. It is very good. Um, yeah. 
I, I'd have to say that my least favorite, which I know it goes against all of you guys, but it's probably the Super 8. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, it's hard because I liked a lot of them, so mm. one had to be at the bottom. Yeah. It's so. definitely the most weird. It is. It is the weird one. Um, and normally I really like weird beers, but this one was just not one that I liked as much. Hmm. Um, then probably the Namaste White, and then the Sequential Ale, and probably this uh, this IPA is probably my favorite. Man, so Sequen that was your second, mm-hmm. and that was Kyle and I's least favorite. Right. Yep. Yeah. Because I, I, I don't know. The one that I had the other day, I put down pretty quickly. I, <laughs> I liked it a lot. So. Good job, Dogfish Head. You made an IPA that I like. Well done. Yeah, very good. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll uh, get ready to move on to the next section. This is our special spotlight before we move on to the play section. Uh, Kyle tries Guinness. It is. Yeah. It looks very appealing to me. I love the, like, that is such a great head. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's probably it the is. best head I've ever seen. Like, it's so thick. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful. Like, your head looks the best. <laughs> I love the way your head looks. <laughs> I just got to take a picture of it. Yeah. Dude, a it's a one. great head. That is a good one. It's a good head right there. And we'll put that on our Instagram. <laughs> yeah, you got to take a picture of your head. Yeah, it's good, man. Yeah, dude, there's something about the way Guinness looks. <laughs> Kyle, I remember it, I think it was the first episode. You said you had the, the real light. It was the... Pilsner Lager, right? Yeah, this is the beer of that's my people. the one I really like. This is like <laughs> the beer of my people. It's <laughs> Ireland, man. Makes me happy. All right. Give it the old one, too. Let us know what you like. Toasty. Mm-hmm. Going back for a second try. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. huh. What was the name of that other one we had in the first on our first episode? The Edmund Fitzgerald. I like it better. Yeah. Edmund Fitzgerald is better. It has, see, it's toastier, Mm -hmm. but the Edmund Fitzgerald also has more of that, like, coffee taste to it. Yeah, that's true. But the coffee one you made is by far my favorite of the three of them that I've had. Okay. There's just that coffee taste, a little bit of, like, burnt toast. Mm Mm-hmm. This doesn't, it does, this is just like, this is like a, just like a burnt coffee bean to me. It, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very like, the word that came to mind when I tried it was like roasted. Yeah. It just tastes like roasted oh, yeah. something. I don't know. Oh yeah. I, I love Guinness. I'll probably get hate for it, but it's only getting a five out of 10. Oh boy. Man. Five out of 10. Boy, I don't, I don't know if you're going to stay in my house too much longer. Dude, I I like I think like I've had Guinness before, but I like it. I think I might be with Kyle though that I like the Edmund Fitzgerald better. It was better. Oh, I don't I don't know. I would give it like a six out of ten, and yours was like a seven out of ten. Okay. Not trying to suck up to you, <laughs> but I really like that beer. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah. But his, the one that Jack made actually had coffee in it though. Well, yes, it in that. Yeah. <laughs> And I don't like coffee, so like that was like an extra bonus. I was like, "Wow, this is this is coffee I like." I'm drinking coffee now. It's I know Jack. We've talked about this before, but Guinness for being such a dark beer, it's not heavy. Oh, it's so light. Which is it is light. Weird. I will give it that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's I love it. Like it is that is really a talent because it. It's so dark, but I'm used to, like, if it's a really dark beer, I'm used to it lingering around for, like, mm-hmm. minutes after mm-hmm. I drink it. But it's just that you get to taste and it's gone. And it's gone. Yep. That might, maybe, I don't know. To my brain, like, that's probably why people love it. Yeah, Yeah, probably. I could see that. Like, you get that great dark beer taste, but it doesn't mm-hmm. feel heavy. And, right. Yeah. Right. And it's, I think that's why. I think that's why I probably like it. Yeah. It's, it's good. It is good. But I feel like if you brewed this with some actual coffee, mm. it'd be real good. I have a dry Irish stout that's supposed to be pretty close to this hmm. that I need to make. Is it weird to say, like, from a like a texture standpoint, like it's almost creamy? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Oh yeah, definitely creamy. And that's that nitrogen in it. Mm, yeah. Um, which makes it so good. 
very pleasant. I would say it's Guinness is a good go to if you like dark beers. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. Now if I dropped a shot of Jameson in this, I bet I'd really like it. <laughs> oh, Irish yeah. car bomb. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Mm-hmm. That's like two of my favorite things. I do like Jameson. Jameson and Guinness. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like for me, Guinness is probably like a like seven and a half. Like it's passing the class. It's not excelling, but like it's doing as well as it needs to do, you know? If we're gonna compare it to someone in school, like this is like <laughs> this is like the kid that's sitting in the back of the class, not really doing great, doesn't really care, but he's having a great time doing it. <laughs> I guess it's kind of me. <laughs> So Kyle, your your personality is a Guinness. No, no, it's a five out of ten. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm I love a big it. fan of that. That's good. Oh, that is that is very good. Well, with that said, <laughs> let's uh, move on. Let's move on to the play section. Um, what have you guys been playing this week? Kyle, you made a noise like you had something great to say. I, I did not, because I haven't been playing much of anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. So uh, I played this game called Wuppo, W-U-P-P-O. Okay. It's like it's supposed to be like Metroidvania kind of thing. Yeah. Just wasn't real impressed. Huh. Like it was, I played like two hours, and I was like, eh, I'm kind of bored. Yeah put it down probably not going to come back to it but another game i have been playing is a game that i know i really like because i've played like 100 plus hours on steam (laughs) but uh went back to play rocket league again oh yeah (laughs) it's like i'm not normally big on sports games unless they're like a little bit of a twist to them like right like i really liked super mario strikers back in the day oh yeah but uh rocket league is great man it's it's really satisfying because of all the physics mechanics. Yeah. Like, it's not like a normal sports game where it's like, push A to shoot ball, you know? <laughs> like, if you're going to take a shot, you got to, you know, boost your car and angle it the right way. And right. Yeah, it's, it's really fun. I think that's, like, everybody's reaction to <clears throat> um, Rocket League is, um, I don't like sports games that much, but this one's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's really fun. That's cool. Well, uh, I haven't really played a whole lot this week. However, um, on the day of recording, uh, Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled came out. Nice. And I played, like, the first track of it today. And, <laughs> it, like, memories came flooding back. I love this game. And it, it's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of fun. And I can't wait, because next week, Super Mario Maker 2 comes out. <laughs> And I have nice. it pre-ordered. I can't wait. The first game was so much fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a good time. Hmm. Is there any games coming out that you guys are looking forward to? Uh, so just recently, um, it looked really weird. It just came out, I think, yesterday or today. Mm-hmm. My friend Pedro. There's this... <laughs> okay, Kyle, I got to show you this. <laughs> have you heard of it? No. All right. <laughs> look, look at this banana, Kyle. That's Pedro. Uh, okay. There's there's a there's a sentient banana named Pedro with this little face, and apparently he uh, he he talks to the player and uh, leads you to brutally murder people. That's the kind of banana I like. It's it's like a like a two D like side scrolling shooter. Okay. And you can I watched a little bit of gameplay and it looks really fun. Like, you can slow down time and, like, do backflips through the air. It has, like, this targeting system that you can, like, aim at two different targets at once. So you can be, like, doing flips over obstacles, like, shooting in two different directions with each of your hands. Like, it looks really cool. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Yeah. Pedro seems like an interesting 4011. <laughs> <laughs> and only people who have worked as cashiers in grocery stores will get that joke. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody else will get that. They'll be like, what's 4011? Uh, it's the international number for bananas. He's a banana. <laughs> 
So, yeah, that game looks interesting. I saw it on Steam the other day. Um, available for, like, pre-order or something like that. Yeah. That looks like my kind of thing. Like, <laughs> it looks like it has solid mechanics. It's a lot of fun. It's weird. There's a sentient banana, like... Published by Devolver Digital, who has made or published lots of games that I really like. Nice. I've always wanted to meet a sentient banana. Right? <laughs> now you can. Now you can. Give my friend Pedro. There you go. All right. <laughs> well, with that said, uh, is there anything else you want guys want to talk about in the play section? No. Mm, can't say there's no? for me. I'm mostly in the watch section this week. Yes, I think yeah. we all are. Uh, the watch section today will contain spoilers for the movie John Wick 3. Heads up. All right, so we're in the watch section now. We took a little field trip yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. And we went and watched uh, John Wick 3. Yep. And before we get too into it, I was really surprised there was no previews before the movie. Yeah, that was great, though. Yeah, it was so nice. Oh, it was cool. I, it just threw me off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just threw straight into off. the movie. Yeah, I don't know if that was just like our theater or like... I may be intentional. Yeah, I don't, know. I don't know. Odd. But yeah, not having previews before the movie was great. Yeah. It was just like, 7.15, movie starting. There it yeah. is. Like, mm -hmm. had the little title sequence roll in and then right into the movie. Yeah. It was cool. So, speaking of, what'd you guys think? <laughs> it was what I expected. Let me, let me start with that. Same. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, not not the twists. Like there were there were some things that happened in the movie that I didn't expect. Mm -hmm. But I, from a story standpoint and from an action standpoint, it is what I expected. It's a very much was a John Wick movie. Okay. Yeah. What What about you, Kyle? Uh, okay, so I'm not super invested into this story. To me, there's not a lot of there's not a lot of meat to it to drag me into this story. It's just to me, it's it's just a bunch of great action sequences put in a row, and you just kind of make something to just make them meld together, which mm -hmm. is fine. They're great action right. sequences, and I love them. It's entertaining, but it there's no like really deep substance, no like real great like thing to take away from it. It's just like that was fun, right? Yeah, I mean, I think, so I'm going to disagree with you guys a little bit and say it wasn't quite what I was expecting because I have just fairly recently watched the first two, right? And watching this third one, it seemed a lot less grounded in reality and a lot more over the top. So, like, in the first two... Like, there were some pretty over-the-top action sequences, sure. Like, in the second one, like, him running through the catacombs, like, gunning people down. Looks like a video game, mm -hmm. right? Or, like, the nightclub sequence in the first one. Like, you know, there, there's some pretty intense stuff. That you're like, I don't, I don't know how real that is. But in, in the context of the world, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. But in this one, like, towards the very beginning of the movie, he's, like, got horses kicking people in the head for that was him. cool i like, did like that <laughs> just like running through this horse stable and he like pats the horse and it kicks his dude in the head and i was like i don't know the only thing i didn't like about that is when he does it two times in a row i was just like dude <laughs> there, okay so that was a theme for me in the movie yeah when they did like repeat action things like mm -hmm. the scene with holly berry and her two dogs. I felt oh, like yeah. I watched the same scene like five times. Like in a the row. fifth time you saw a guy yeah. like get bit by the dog in between yeah. his legs, and yeah. you're like, "We just watched this happen yeah. to four other nameless dudes." Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. There. I will say, like comparing it to the other two, the, this third one like was the first time in the series that I thought a couple different times, like, "This is a really long sequence." Like, especially towards the end, uh, when he was fighting the, the bald guy, mm -hmm. um, like, that fight, I was, like, I felt like it kind of drug on a little bit. Like, they did the, you know, kind of reversal thing where, like, one of them would disappear yeah. and come back and they'd fight and then they, you know, punched each other and wrestled for a while and the other one disappeared. Right. And uh, I don't know, like, 
it was still really good and mm-hmm. super entertaining. And I really liked what they did with like the world building, mm-hmm. with, like the I don't I forget what they called him, but the guy who's like above the high table. Yeah, the elder or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how he was like, you know, not if, even old at all. No. Yeah. <laughs> But like I, I mid forties. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but He's I, I thought that whole setup was like really interesting, and like the whole mm-hmm. like you know, John, if you go kill Winston, the guy who is basically the reason you're alive, like, right. and you become an assassin for the high table, like, we'll forgive your trespasses and stuff. But uh, I don't know. Like, right. I felt like it was just overall like assessment. It was really fun, but slightly below the other two. Right. <sighs> when he chopped his finger off, I was like, okay, now you gotta edit that. <laughs> no, I loved that, though. <laughs> like, that whole... That was the most interesting part of the movie to me. From a filmmaker standpoint, yeah. that just gave me an aneurysm thinking about how many times we were going to see that hand for the rest of the movie and for the rest of the series. <laughs> but in the fourth one, he'll just wear a glove. Yeah. It'll be fine. Yeah, they'll Star Wars it. Yeah, probably. I don't know. I thought cutting off his finger was weak. Really? I thought it was weak. No, you, see, I love that. Because you knew he wasn't going to do what the guy wanted him to, mm-hmm. but he cut off his finger anyway. Like, right. he just submitted. Right. I yeah. was like, dude, come on. I don't know. We know. This is your movie. We know you can take all those guys. Right. That's what you're going to do anyways. But I loved the, like, the symbolism of... Because if it was just like, you got to cut off a finger, chop, here's my finger. Like, ah, I could see that. But the fact that it was his ring finger, like with his mm-hmm. wedding band still on it. Yeah. That and had... him like handing the ring over to the elder. Mm-hmm. Like, I thought that and then like the whole dynamic with him and Winston like talking mm-hmm. in that room. And like the adjudicator comes yeah. in and is like, are you going to put a bullet through his head? And he's just like, mm-hmm. no. No. <laughs> Like, I thought that was really awesome that he was like, I'm going to take a stand and fight against the high table. And then the ending kind of being ambiguous with like Winston shooting him in his bulletproof suit. Like, I'm sure Winston is pretty good as an assassin if he wants to be like, if he wanted to kill John Wick, he would have shot him in the head. Yeah, I feel like it was intentional. He was so I feel like they were setting up like that tension, like between the high table and like. There are these rules that govern all the assassins, but, like, they're not, like, infallible. They can be fought against. I feel like they're setting up the fourth movie to be, like, this war between, like... I feel like it was a lot... It was, like, a sense of honor between the two. Yeah. Mm, I don't know. They didn't want to portray each other necessarily, but they were both going to do what they needed to do to survive. Exactly. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. Effects wise in the movie, there weren't, I mean, there were a few that made me go, wow, that's amazing, but not a ton of them. The one that comes to mind was when he first got the shotgun at the end where he came back to reload. Yeah. And he shot that dude's helmet like halfway off. That Mm -hmm. was pretty cool. I was like, that, that looked amazing. That whole sequence when they went back to that like vault and got the shotguns, mm-hmm. like that was awesome. Yeah. It was that was funny. All oh, this the speed loading he was doing mm-hmm. was great. That was <laughs> awesome. It was it, yeah. There were there was a lot of really cool gun mechanics that they did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I kind of liked that that sequence where like all the high table guys and like the body armor mm-hmm. were like assaulting the hotel. Yeah. Cuz I like, you know, it's it's John Wick. Like, he's probably not going to die, right? right. Yeah. But having those guys just, like, take bullets and, like, he had to keep shooting, like, one, two, three, one, two, three, between each target so they stayed down right. just so he could get in close and, like, pull I up I really like how they did that, them. though. Like, you, yeah, he had to awesome. keep shooting a target to keep it knocked down. It wasn't just, like, the bullets didn't phase him at all because right. they had armor on. Like, there was, you could tell there was actual force behind the bullet when it mm-hmm. hit them. Yeah, that was that was very cool. And of course, you guys notice the the lights that got turned on in the hotel. They were, were green. green. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I wonder what movie that's referencing. <laughs> got that callback. <laughs> yeah. That visual callback to the Matrix. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. It was cool though. Oh, it was very yeah. cool. And, and then just... at the end, he's he's there with Lawrence Fishburne. Mm-hmm. They're both like. We're PO'd. Yep. <laughs> that was it. 
Uh, Lawrence Fishburne, like, <laughs> he was good in that movie. He was funny. Yeah. He was. He was funny. There, there were a lot of moments that made me laugh. Mm-hmm. There were. I feel like it's that's one of the things too that was different about the action was like when I watched the other two, like there might have been a couple like little like chuckles, but it was more of like a, oh that was intense. Yeah, it was more you know? serious. But this one like there were a lot more like laughing at how over the top some of the things were. Yeah. Because like there was a sequence where they were all on motorcycles. <laughs> There's like the four guys lined or six guys lined yeah. up behind them on motorcycles, and they all like whip out their swords. Right. And I was just like, like I smiled because it was cool, but I was also like, this is just nuts, you know? Yeah, it was, it was certainly something. Apparently, Parabellum is in, I don't even know what language they speak in that. No, I couldn't tell you. I, I couldn't tell you. But apparently that's, it means prepare for war. Oh, I think that was Latin. Oh, was it Latin? Yeah, because I, I recognized, so Parabellum is the end of like a, phrase was like if you want peace prepare for war yeah and yeah. the first part he was like said pachem which i know is uh, peace in latin okay so yeah interesting yeah it could be so the whole movie is basically them getting setting up for war I think, yeah see i, I love yeah. that because i thought that fit like mm-hmm. i like that scene where winston says that right and it like when that happened i was like like, you kind of had an idea of what was going to happen the rest of the movie, like, prepare for war. Right. But I feel like that fit really well. Yeah, because the whole movie's setting up this this conflict that's eventually going to happen in the next film. Yeah. yeah. It felt like the pilot episode of a season. Yeah, you know? I can see that. And then they're going to have the follow-up where it's, like, John Wick and the Bowery Kings, Lawrence, mm-hmm. Lawrence Fishburne's character, and, like, maybe... The guy, like some of the guys from the hotel, Mm -hmm. depending on, you know, I feel like they could do interesting things with that. So it it will, I'll probably watch it. Yeah. Same. (laughs) Yeah. I definitely agree though. Like it, it does really feel like a pilot episode to like a great show. See, and that's my gripe against movies though, is you, you can't, if you have like 10 hours over a series of a TV show, you can develop so much, so many more characters. You have to like specifically pick who you pick out who you want to develop and who you're going to focus on. And you have to make the story a certain way. I feel like if they turn it into a TV show, it could be so much more enjoyable. Yeah, and I think <sighs> there is talk of them making a spin-off. Oh yeah. Called The Continental. Yeah. Interesting. Like a spin-off TV show. I don't know how that would work. I think it would be awesome, but that's just me. I don't know. It would be something. I I, I don't don't know. I mean, if it centered around the hotel, I think that would be cool. Yeah. But. I think it should follow the concierge guy. Yeah. That would be sweet. Honestly, he's the most interesting person to me in that movie. The whole series. Because he he just sees all this stuff and he's like, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like. Just super chill about it. I want to see the thing that makes him go. What? <laughs> right. Like, I want to see yeah. that. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Anything else to say about the movie? I will say, in addition to feeling like, like you said, Jack, the pilot episode to, like, a show that comes after, like, I also feel like it being called John Wick Chapter 3, mm-hmm. like, it does feel like the third chapter in the story also, like, in the way it relates to the other two. Like, I think tonally it's a little different, like, like I said, wasn't quite as grounded and like a little more f- funny in like the action. Like there was the bald assassin guy that was like, oh, Mr. Wick, like I'm so, right. so great to meet you when they were sitting in the <laughs> Continental. Like z- didn't seem quite as serious, but. Yeah, I, I, it, yeah. I think calling it a chapter was very appropriate. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like the comic relief chapter. Yeah. A little yeah. bit, but yeah. still serious enough to be like part of the same book, you know? Right. I, I think that they are getting to a point where they're comfortable going weird places. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. And, and I mean, it, the series so far has taken place over a week. Yeah. So, it's a pretty short time frame. Yeah. But it does allow you to explain more like you would in a TV show. I yeah. do like that about it. I, yeah. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. So it's been interesting. It's not like this is a year and two hours. Right. <laughs> right. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> it's like he just mysteriously survived a year yeah. and a half between right. movies. It's like, nope, it's been like five minutes. He's yeah. still on the run, you know? When movies do that, like, I know we talked about these movies last time, but the Bourne movies did that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Between Supremacy and Ultimatum. I think with the movies. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. Um, was like 30 seconds yep. after the other movie. Mm -hmm. ended. It was... Hit the water and then you're back in the movie. Yep. It was pretty cool. I'd be interested to hear like a comparison between the two. Because I, I know we've been making comparisons just because right. like they're both action franchises that we really like. Mm -hmm. It would be interesting. Cause I, I feel like the Bourne movies have a little bit more of that like spy kind of oh, deal going yeah. on whereas with john wick it's like he's a hitman yeah you know he's well, an assassin right there's so much mystery that surrounded the born movies mm -hmm. which made okay it, yeah so they both kind of do that like like you get to know the character mm -hmm. and there's a lot of mystery like right. but you get to know the character through their actions like, exactly and i think what was so compelling about the born films was so you learned about him as he learned about himself. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which was so cool. I think that was brilliant. Um, but at the same time, when John Wick pulls it off, is just by his everyday actions is how we learn about him, which yeah. was really cool. Mm -hmm. So goes both ways. Both great franchises that I'm a oh, big fan of. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Yeah. Absolutely. So, all right. Anything else? I think I'm good. Cool. Well, uh, this has been episode three of Root Play Watch. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks for listening, and uh, have a good one. See you next time. Later. Later.